Good day. I'm Jennifer Manner. I'm the Deputy Bureau Chief for the Public Safety and Homeland Security Bureau and Acting Director of the Public Safety and Homeland Security Bureau and the FCC's Emergency Response Interoperability Center. Yesterday, the Commission adopted an order and further notice of proposed rulemaking on interoperability rules for the nationwide public safety broadband network. Our discussion today will provide you with the highlights of this effort. This item advances the vision that the National Broadband Plan had with regard to the nationwide interoperable public safety broadband network. The first step was the creation of the Emergency Response Interoperability Center, or what we call ERIC. Just last spring, we authorized 21 early deployments of the public safety broadband network. This was followed in December with an order providing these entities with guidance on interoperability. Today, we take another big step. I'm Bezat Ghaffari, the System Engineer in Chief with ERIC. I'll cover some of the technical details of this item. The first part of this item is a short order. In this order, we take significant steps to address interoperability by adopting rules to guide development of a nationwide interoperable public safety broadband network. First, to ensure nationwide interoperability, we mandate that all public safety broadband networks adopt LTE as a common technology platform. Additionally, we adopt a set of key LTE interfaces to ensure interoperability and roaming. Second, due to significantly changed circumstances, since the unsuccessful attempt to implement a mandatory public-private partnership in 2008, we stay particular existing mandatory partnership rules in order to provide certainty during the pendency of this proceeding. The second part of this item is a further notice of proposed rulemaking. We start interoperability rules with the notion of an architectural vision for a nationwide network. We believe that the development of a uniform nationwide architectural framework will promote a comprehensive understanding of interoperability and the steps that must be taken to achieve that objective. We propose a set of high-level principles to guide development of, of the network in a manner that ensures interoperability. We seek comment on each of these principles. These principles are as follows the description of various components of the architecture, the characteristics of the regional networks that are addressed shortly, support of voice and data communications over this nationwide network, roaming authentication and interworking functions for the nationwide network, nationwide backbone network interconnecting all regional networks, services and capabilities offered at the national level, and evolution of this nationwide network over time. We seek comment on all these matters and in particular, we seek comment on whether we should establish guiding principles for public safety broadband network architecture and if so, whether the principles mentioned here are the principles that should serve as the basis of this architectural vision. In this fourth further notice, we consider and propose additional requirements to further promote and, and enable nationwide interoperability among public safety broadband networks operating in the 700 megahertz band. We seek comment on a set of proposed interoperability rules. First, we address the definition of interoperability. The Department of Homeland Security, DHS, provides a definition for interoperability. We propose to amend, the, to amend the Commission's definition of interoperability in Part 90 to harmonize it with DHS. We seek comment on this proposal. Next, we address open standards. We seek comment on implementation of open standards in, in order to promote interoperability and cost effectiveness. While we, adopt, while we adopted LTE in, in the order, we seek comment on its evolution to new releases, its compatibility, any additional interfaces, IP versions, and so forth. Next, we address the important issue of PLM and ID. 
which is a required system identifier according to the 3GPP standards. Various options to assign these IDs are explored in this notice. We seek comment on all these options. Additionally, we seek comment on, on the mechanism by which PLM and IDs should be acquired and assigned. Roaming configuration. The 3GPP LT standards set two, ca two categories of roaming home routed and local breakout. We tentatively conclude that all public safety broadband networks should have the ability to support both categories of roaming. We seek comment on this co conclusion. Uh, roaming authentication and interworking function. This is another important issue that needs to be addressed. Roamers will need to be authenticated in their visited networks as they would be in their own networks. We tentatively conclude that there would be significant efficiency gains if such functions were performed by third-party clearing houses rather than by each network operator. We seek comment on this tentative conclusion and raise additional questions for comment. Interconnectivity. Regional networks will not serve as a nationwide interoperable broadband network unless they are interconnected with adequate capacity. A number of alternative solutions for interconnectivity of regional networks exist. Three alternatives are outlined in this notice, and we seek comment on each. Priority of access and quality of service. We seek comment on how public safety broadband networks should support both prioritization and quality of service among connections as well as applications. LT provides priority mechanism through certain capabilities and we seek comment on them. Mobility and handover, we seek comment on these capabilities. Application, one means of facilitating roaming across public safety broadband network is to ensure that the users of each network have access to a common set of applications. We tentatively conclude the following applications to be adopted. One, Internet access, two, VPN access, three, a status or information homepage, four, network access for users under the incident command system, and five, field based server applications. Security is another important matter that is addressed in this notice. We tentatively conclude the adoption of certain security features of LT and seek comment on this, ten on this tentative conclusion and, and other security options. In this notice, we seek comment on the interconnectivity with public safety legacy networks. Next, we address interoperability verification through conformance testing and interoperability testing. Interoperability requires that user devices and network equipment comply with relevant standard specification. We tentatively conclude that all user devices be subject to conformance testing. Additionally, we tentatively conclude that public safety broadband networks to perform IoT for the LT roaming interfaces that are identified in the order. We seek comment on this tentative conclusion and related testing verification matters. Hello, I'm Pat Amadio, Chief of Radio Frequency Engineering for the Emergency Response Interoperability Center. The remaining interoperability topics are focused on baseline operability requirements for public safety broadband networks to ensure that disparate networks are interoperable. We see comment on additional technical requirements and there are also tentatively proposed rules in order to ensure nationwide interoperability. Let me address these items in more detail. Out-of-band emissions is important to protect public safety from interference from adjacent and near operations. Otherwise, nationwide interoperability could be affected. We therefore tentatively propose to adopt limits for the nationwide public safety broadband network. In addition, we noted that out-of-band emission standards are already in place with respect to the public safety narrowband spectrum in 47 CFR Part 90.543E that remain in effect. For performance, we recognize that Spectrum is a valuable public re resource and the Commission is committed to ensuring that this resource is used efficiently. So we tentatively 
conclude that it is appropriate to adopt performance requirements for public safety broadband networks. Accordingly, we tentatively conclude that we should require public safety broadband networks to provide outdoor coverage at a minimum data rate of 256 kilobits for, per second for the uplink and 768 kilobits per second for the downlink for all types of devices for a single user at the cell edge. Network capacity. We see comment on the backhaul and network core capacity to maintain the desired network service quality. Robustness and hardening. We see comment on rela related to the backup power at each e node B or cell site within a public safety broadband network. Coverage requirements. We see comment on the advantages and disadvantages for adopting either a population or geographic based build out requirement. This requirement would maximize coverage while preserving the economic viability of a nationwide network. Coverage reliability. We tentatively conclude that the network should provide outdoor coverage reliability at a probability of coverage of 95% for all services and applications throughout the network. This is a standard commonly used today by land mobile radio and cellular industries. An unreliable network is inoperable and therefore not interoperable. Interference coordination. We previously required as a condition of deployment for waiver recipients that prior to deployment they coordinate and address interference mitigation needs with any adjacent or bordering jurisdictions that also plan deployment. In this notice we see comment on interference mitigation techniques and e -node B features which will avoid signal or spectral efficiency degradation issues within the region and between overlapping adjacent regions. Network operations, administration and maintenance, and reporting on network deployment are additional areas that we see comment. Devices. We see comment on channel bandwidth requirements, band class 14 support, and multi-mode support for the use of devices on the public safety LTE networks. And finally, other areas we see comment on are in-building communications, which are focused on questions to achieve in-building coverage, deployable assets to supplement their existing coverage and capacity, and the use of public safety broadband network for fixed uses.